Hello and welcome to Business Communication. Originally, this class is actually called Debate and Presentation in English, but I feel that Business Communication is a better title for it because we're going to be using business as the subject matter and we'll practice speaking and listening and we will do some debating and of course we'll do some short presentations as well my name is barry i think most of you already know me and i know most of you if we haven't met yet hopefully we will meet in person soon depending on when this corona thing settles down it has been a crazy couple of weeks and <clears throat> even months so in any case it's great to meet you i'm glad that you're here um, in this ppt i'm gonna give you a short introduction to this course and also go through some important points about unit one which is the first unit we're going to do together so i hope you enjoy this introduction presentation so what will we do in this course as i mentioned in slide one this is a business course so we'll be using a business textbook called Market Leader. More about that later. And we're going to do four important things. So number one, we're going to learn new vocabulary that you can use in business situations. We'll also learn and practice useful grammar structures. And these will help us with our speaking fluency. To do this, we're going to have a lot of practice, and our practice will come in two forms, role plays and case studies. So role plays you've done before with a partner or a small group. I'll give you a situation, you each have a role, and then you will act it out. <clears throat> case studies might be new for you. Um, each unit in our book has a case study at the end of the unit, and that gives you a real-life situation that happened to a real business, and you'll work in small groups to solve a problem. Each case study has a problem that you need to solve, so you'll work with partners in a small group to try to solve that problem. So again, role plays and case studies are what we'll use to help us practice this new vocabulary we're learning and the useful grammar structures that we'll be learning as well. So for this course, there are two key tools that you will need. Number one, of course, is your textbook. We are using a textbook called Market Leader Elementary. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure you don't have the book yet because you haven't been on campus yet. Um, so for the first unit, I, well, actually for all the units, <laughs> I found an e-copy of this book and I put that on Canvas. You'll find it in the files section on Canvas. So you can go there, you can download the book to your computer, or you can just read it um, using Canvas as well. Um, you should print out the units before each class. You need to come to class with a paper copy. It's much easier to keep track of where we are and to write notes if you have paper in front of you instead of just using your phone. Um, but that will be for when we start in-person classes. For now, you can just use your phone or computer to go through Unit 1. Uh, you will also need a Canvas account, which most of you already have. And again, on Canvas, you'll find our textbook 
and our syllabus that explains this course and has my contact information as well. And we will, I will also post homework on Canvas, um, including online discussions, which we'll talk about more later when we get to those. So those are the two main things. Um, we'll also do some audio recording from time to time, so you'll need your phone for that. And Kakao, of course, we have our Kakao chat room, and you'll be able to send me audio recordings from time to time on Kakao. And of course, notebook and pen or pencil for each in-person class that we have. So that is it for tools. Now let's talk about grades, which I'm sure you are curious about. Uh, we have a midterm exam and a final exam. Each is worth 20% of your final grade. And they will both be speaking exams where you will work with a small group maybe doing a role play or case study together in class in front of just me not the other students and that's how we'll do our exams because this is a speaking communication class our exams will also be speaking and communication based Class participation is 40% of your grade, and obviously that makes participating in class extremely important. It's a speaking class, and you can only practice if you speak. So sitting in the back, hiding, will not help your participation grade. And finally, homework is 20%. Uh, this will include uh, textbook homework, uh, quizzes that we sometimes will have based on the textbook homework, and online discussions, and things like that. So that is it for grades for this class. So let's get into our textbook, Unit 1, and in this slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about the key vocabulary you'll find in Unit 1. And that starts out with nationalities, how to talk about nationalities. So, for example, my friend is from Brazil. He is Brazilian. Um, this ice cream is from Turkey. It's Turkish ice cream. I had many students from Oman in my class, so I had many Omani students. And I am from the United States, so I am American. This seems simple, but a lot of times, especially Korean speakers, have trouble with this because in Korean you say things like miguk saram, right? And to say America person, in English sounds very strange, so you really need to learn how to make these nationality adjectives if, to talk about countries. Okay. Uh, also, since this is an introductory unit, we're going to be practicing introducing yourself and talking about family. So things like age, job, nationality, hobbies, interests outside of work, and your uh, marital status. For example, I'm married. Um, you, most of you, are probably single. So those are all important. Those words and any words related to them that you can use to introduce yourself when you're meeting new people. And then the third thing is jobs. So you'll come across several job names in this unit. I've listed a few here like accountant, engineer, lawyer, receptionist, sales assistant, and office worker. There are more in your book and you will find them on page 11. So some of these words may be new for you if they are and if you have no idea what they mean, feel free to look them up in your 
phone dictionary so that you know exactly what those jobs are. Those are all pretty common jobs. So you should know what they what they are. Okay, so that covers our key vocabulary in unit one. It's pretty easy, um, but that's a good way to get us started in the course. Okay, let's move on to talk about the key grammar in this unit. And really there are just two things. So the B verb, which you all know, um, but the B verb is irregular in English. So it's always good to review it and practice it as much as possible. So I am, you, we, they are, he, she, it is. So again, you all know that already, but to be able to use it correctly when you're in the middle of a conversation, you really need to practice it as much as possible so that you don't have to think about it when you're speaking. Because if you have to stop to think about it, that really hurts your fluency. And it should be just automatic, right? I am married. My friend is married. They are married. Um, you don't want to have to stop to think about it each time you need to use it. It should come very naturally to you. And that will only happen if you practice it a lot. Okay, so that's the B verb. Then the other important grammar focus for this unit is the question words. So the WH words for questions. So who, what, when, where, why, and how. So. Because this is an introduction unit, you're going to be asking each other questions to find out information about each other. So you'll need to know how to use these questions plus the be verb together to ask well-formed questions. So for example, where are you from? Where is his office? What do you do for a living? Or what is your job? All of those types of questions you'll need to use the be verb correctly plus the wh questions so practice those and that will help you and in the next slide we'll talk about some tips that will help you with your fluency and that will also help you sound more natural Okay, this is my favorite part. These are some of my tips to help you be more fluent and to sound more natural when you speak English. These are simple things, but if you do them right, they, they'll they really help your English sound better and it'll also make you more confident when you're speaking English. So just because they're simple doesn't mean that they're not important. Um, if you can do these simple things correct, every time, it'll really make a big difference in how you sound. So tip one, um, you know, we, we often say, my name is Barry, right? My name is blah, blah. Um, but don't be afraid to use contractions here to make, to, to try something different. So my name is Barry, right? See how that sounds? My name is Barry. I sound a little bit like a robot there. But if I say, my name's Barry, or simply, I'm Barry, it's much shorter, faster, easier. <laughs> um, so don't be afraid to, to use those that sound, to sound more natural. Tip two, uh, I talked about this a little bit earlier, those nationality adjectives, right? We don't say, parang susaram, right? In English, we say, he's French. So if you're going to be talking about a country, make sure you know ahead of time how to make an adjective out of that nationality. And if you don't know, look it up and you can find it on online. So he's a he's he, not he's a France person. He's French. Not he's an America America person. He's American. You're not a Korea person. You're a Korean. All right, tip three, <clears throat> excuse me, tip three, um, you can say my job is blah, blah, but it sounds 
really awkward. So we're going to use the be verb here, plus an article, plus the job title. So I wouldn't say my job is teacher. I would say I'm a teacher. What about you? What's your job? What do you do? You wouldn't say my job is student. You would say, right, I'm a student. So here you need to make sure you have your be verb. Again, see why that's so important. And then use the right article. So if, if you're talking to an accountant, she's going to say, I'm an accountant because of the vowel A in accountant. She's going to use un. I'm an accountant. And of course, if you're talking about a group of people and using the plural noun, you can drop the article. So uh, if my mother and father are both teachers, I can say they are teachers. I don't need the article for that one. All right, moving on to tip four. Um, this is a little bit similar to tip one. Uh, use contractions as much as possible to sound more natural. So where is your office? Sounds a little bit like a robot is talking. If I contract it with an apostrophe S, where's your office? Where's your office? It sounds much more natural. It's also much easier to say. So use contractions when possible to sound more natural. And our last tip is um, deals with jobs, job titles. Sometimes you, you don't know the exact title, but you know the field or industry that a person works in. In that case, you're going to use the preposition in to talk about the field. So, for example, if my, fr my friend um, has a job in human resources, but I don't know exactly what the job title is, I can say my friend works in human resources. And if my friend works, um, works in marketing, but I don't know exactly the title of the job, I can say she works in marketing. So this lets you explain a little bit about the person's job without having to say exactly what the title is. Um, so that's, that can be very useful. Okay, so that's all of the main content. So we talked about vocabulary and grammar and some tips. Um, that's the main content for unit one. In the next slide, I'll explain um, your assignment and next steps. Congratulations, you've made it through the main content of this lecture. And now we're gonna talk about what you need to do next uh, for your assignment and for homework. So the first thing you need to do is under this video on YouTube, leave a short comment in English. You can say anything you want, but try to keep it positive. Um, this comment will be proof that you attended this lecture. If, you're, if you don't leave a comment, we have no way to know that you actually watched the lecture. So please leave a short comment there. It can be one or two sentences, anything that shows that you watched it. Okay. Then your homework uh, for week one is posted on Canvas, and there are two parts to it. So part one is to go through unit one in your textbook. And again, I've um, already talked about the, the most important parts of that but you should go through each page in your textbook and do the activities. Um, again, if you don't have the textbook, you can find an electronic copy in the files section of Canvas. And then the second thing is an online discussion. There are instructions for this on Canvas. You're gonna imagine that you are 40 years old you're going to think about what, what you do for a living and where you live and do you have a family and what's your job title. And you're going to uh, write an introduction 
introducing yourself to the class. Again, you're imagining that you're 40 years old. So you've graduated from Gimchan already. You've been working for like almost 20 years. At this point, 40 years old. What is your job title? Where do you work? What do you do there? And then tell us a bit about where you live and um, your family. Are you married? Are you single? Are you divorced? Do you have children? Things like that. Okay, that covers our first lecture. Again, we talked about the, the course, what it's about, what we're going to learn. We talked about the tools you'll need and what you will be graded on. We also went over uh, the key points from Unit 1. We talked about the important vocabulary and the key grammar that you'll need to do the activities in Unit 1. We also talked about tips for sounding more natural and for being more fluent when you speak English. Um, I also gave you your assignments, which again, leave a comment under this video on YouTube and do Unit 1 in your textbook and the online discussion on Canvas. And one little note I forgot to mention earlier, there are two books, two textbooks in the file section of Canvas. One of them is our textbook, and the, the other one is actually pract like a practice files book. So make sure you're in the right book when you do the homework. We're not, we won't use the, file, the practice files book now. We'll use that later. So just make sure you're in the regular market leader elementary textbook when you do your homework. And if you have any questions, please send a note to our classes group chat room on Kakao. That way um, it benefits everyone in the class because you probably aren't the only person with the question. So if you have a question, don't be afraid to ask it um, in our group chat room. If it's something private, go ahead and send it to me directly. That's fine too. But please ask questions. I'm, I'm here to help you and I will respond very quickly so that you can get on with your work. So this has been super duper fun. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned a lot. And I look forward to seeing you in person soon. So I'll say bye for now.